I was in a serious car accident and the City of Adnes Heights firefighters saved me from the wreck. I was pronounced dead on scene and obviously I didn't die. So 11 years ago I started on the Adnes Heights Fire Department serving with the very guys that pulled me from my wreck. Firefighters, heroes who rush in to save lives and property during our worst moments. I have left Christmas dinner, Thanksgiving dinner, you know, I've left it all. And why? Because I serve the community, because it's in my blood and it's what I do, it's, it's who I am. Honor, bravery, camaraderie, and tradition comprise the rich legacy of firefighting in Minnesota. At the end of September, the Minnesota Fire Service Foundation is dedicating a memorial to Minnesota's fallen firefighters on the state capitol grounds, just a short walk from the Minnesota History Center. It is all about the history. From devastating forest fires like those that destroyed Hinckley in 1894 and Cloquet in 1918, to urban fires like this one at the Jewel Hotel in St. Paul, firefighters have been there. What an amazing journey the fire service has embarked on. Today, they use modern equipment and high-tech chemicals, but not so long ago, firefighters had to make do with far more primitive equipment. Firefighting has changed dramatically since the days of carrying water in buckets and climbing wooden ladders, wearing leather gear, and driving a horse-drawn apparatus. They didn't have self-contained breathing apparatus. That's why a lot of them had the long beards, because they'd wet their beard and put it over their face and go in. Sometimes, despite all the best efforts, lives are lost and families are torn apart. Things are affected when, you know, heroes go down doing what they do. They all deserve to be honored. George Esbenson, Shannon Ryder, and many others have worked on this memorial, remembering the Minnesota firefighters who've died in the line of duty. Over time, the project has become very personal to everyone involved. It started out building a memorial. The collateral benefit has been all these great stories that have come to fruition that we never had heard before. No matter what was asked of me, it was a done deal. I was hooked into the memorial project because these names became people and these people became family members and they had family members. When you talk about any family, and this is just a giant extended family, it's, it's very important to know where you've come from, where, where, what your history is. And in Minnesota, that history starts in 1881 when we have the first recorded line of duty death. Records of all of Minnesota's line of duty deaths are in the care of the State Historical Society. The Minnesota Historical Society connects the people of Minnesota to their history. We collect and preserve things. Um, some of that is right here. We have uh, photographs of fires and firefighters from around the state, um, a film collection from the St. Paul Fire Department, uh, books about firefighting and fire departments, um, and then manuscript collections like this one from the Waterus Company. Uh, they manufactured fire engines in St. Paul. Uh, and then of course artifacts that document just how much the fire service has changed in its equipment and apparatus. On September 30th, 2012, there's gonna be a mark left in, in everybody's life who attends. I think that's really the fire services, um, you know, mantras, whatever it takes, just make it happen. And you know, we don't, our customers aren't really concerned about how we do it, they just want it to get done and hopefully bring order from chaos.